For everyone who's joining us in the U.S., good morning to you, and everyone who's joining us from the U.K., good afternoon. Just a few housekeeping items to get started. Uh, there is a chat feature built into the GoToWebinar. Please feel free to chat with us. If you have any questions, we'll be monitoring the chat throughout and either answering your questions as we go, or at the end we'll circle back and try and answer everyone's questions. Feel free to ask questions about anything we're talking about or anything we're not talking about. Um, there's a, a couple of main points we want to make on today's presentation, but if you have any other questions about anything, feel free to jump in and ask. The other portion of that is audio issues. We can't hear us because we're talking, so if you do have audio issues and we're breaking up or you're not able to hear us or there's a vis visual issue, please feel free to use the chat to let us know and we'll attempt to resolve that as quick as possible. This is being recorded. So this session will be emailed out to everybody who attended or missed it. Thank you people who missed it uh, live and thanks for coming back and watching with us. It'll also be posted on the YouTube channel forever. So hello to those people years in the future listening to this right now. Um, we're gonna get started and first up, we're gonna introduce uh, uh, Dan with Silver Bear. Dan, take it away. Hello, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, my name's Dan Barzotti. I'm Client Engagement Manager at Silver Bear. I've been with, um, with Silver Bear for over six years now, and um, essentially I've seen our, our membership solution being built from the ground up. We have um, effectively spent the last few years building a best-in-class membership management solution that's built on top of the Dynamics 365 platform. Um, we've established ourselves as the UK's leading membership management solutions provider for this uh, professional associations, professional membership, trade associations space only. So we don't diversify, we work exclusively uh, within this space. And as you can see from the slide here, we've, we've built a customer base of over 60 customers with our membership product in the last, in the last five years. We are the only UK provider with CFMD, so we're certified for Microsoft Dynamics. And if you can shift on to the, uh, the next slide, Greg. You can see from our ecosystem here with Silver Bear at the heart, uh, we can leverage all of those features from HighLogic's fantastic community platform as well as integration into learning management solutions such as Moodle um, and ESPs like Click Dimensions, .mailer, uh, and also CMSs like uh, DNN, uh, as well as other content management systems. We've also created, talking about um, DNN and, and web portal modules, we've also created 80 plus uh, Silver Bear web portal modules with a productized integration into um, the Silver Bear Dynamics platform at its center. So that's a little bit about uh, what we do, what Silver Bear do. Over to you, Greg. Thanks, Dan. So I'll tell you a little bit about Higher Logic. If you're not familiar with us, we're an enterprise community platform designed to foster member engagement. We've been doing this now for 10 years and currently power over 170,000 online communities for associations and nonprofits around the world. Higher Logic is not just a technology company that builds software, we're also a strategy company. So a lot of what we do with our clients is help consult with them on best practices, on how do you actually launch a community in a smart way that's actually gonna make it successful. So that's a lot of what we focus on. Our main goal as a company is to help you build engagement. It's all about helping you increase online engagement through your membership, increase volunteering engagement, getting people to sign up for those traditional things you think of as volunteering like committee work, section work, maybe speaking at a conference. But we also wanna push volunteering into short-term and micro-volunteering, where I just ask little things for my members and, and get them to be more committed to me. It could be local, component, section, chapter, regional work, where volunteers are actually running par portions of the software for you, it could be in connection with LMSs, or it could be in connection with advocacy. It's all about a holistic approach to better engaging that member. Now the question is, why would you wanna better engage your member? And I think this is obvious, but it's all about increasing retention rates, becoming stickier with your existing members so they want to remain with you. It also is about finding and attracting new members, building search engine optimization to bring new members in so they learn about the valuable membership 
um, with the organization and then ultimately commit to be a member. Once we get those members in, I want to help you automate the member journey. When a new member joins, I want them to feel very welcome and I want to walk them through a step-by-step -step process on how to get the most out of membership and we'll talk about that today. I also want to help you expand business intelligence. One of the main benefits of owning your own community is you own all those interactions. And we'll talk today about member scoring, how you can track interactions happening in the community, how you can leverage those interactions in your Silver Bear database. So now I'm not only providing members a chance to engage, I'm tracking and analyzing that engagement to find trends, to find members who are highly engaged, or potentially members who are no longer engaged, and we're a little afraid we might lose them. So those are some of the things we're going to talk about today on why hire logic in general. Our core product is our online community, so it comes out of the box with all these different elements to help drive member engagement. But as it's a holistic solution, there are a ton of other ways to engage your members, whether it's through um, you know, mentor programs or volunteering programs or expert directories. We have this really cool platform called Workspace, which is all about collaborating on documents with versioning, check-in, check-out, project plans and balloting. There's a lot of ways that you can leverage the community platform to engage those members in a way that makes sense for you and for your members. So let's start off with the first thing we're going to talk about today, is finding and attracting new members. Think about the websites you go to on a regular basis. Not the kind of website you Google once, you go read the information and you never go back. The kind of website you hit on a daily basis. And when I think about the websites I go to, it tends to be social websites. It tends to be websites where the content is driven by other users on that website. It's social interactions. It's friends of yours posting pictures on Facebook, right? It's, it's people commenting on ESPN about the game that happened last night and what they thought about the players. It's those social interactions that drive return traffic. And associations can leverage this kind of technology as well with what's called an open forum. The idea behind an open forum is members of yours are communicating and collaborating with each other. They're creating content as experts in their industry or field, and that content is bringing in new people. I don't love reading slides, but there's a great line on the left there, is allow your best members to help you find those new members. And this is a real world example. You can actually go to this website obviously after the webinar, and take a look at it. But it's the Coin Laundry Association. And this is a website that we completely power on the Higher Logic platform. And right at the top, they have what they call their open forum. If we go into their open forum, it's a community of over 27,000 members having tons of discussions. They're sharing files. They're blogging. They're writing back and forth with each other. They're engaging. And we're leveraging that member engagement to drive additional search engine optimization. So here's their open forum, and this is what people are talking about. And you can see, just over the past several hours, we have lots of different conversations with lots of different um, interests. But I picked one specific one here. This is a, a member asking a very specific question that's going to help solve a business challenge, right? Do I make decision A or do I make decision B? What are the pros and cons of each of those? Now, if I'm already a member and I know about the Coin Laundry Association, I can just go here and I can read this discussion and I can get my answer and life is good. But I don't really know about that organization yet. I haven't heard about them. So if you're like me, when you have a question, you Google it and you hope to find an answer. So let's Google that same question the member had and see what answers we come up with. Now, when I plugged this search, engine, uh, search into Google, it gave me over 200,000 results. So there's a lot of noise and information out there that I have to kind of filter through to get to what I'm looking for. But the top result right there was the Coin Laundry Association, their website, and the community that we're powering for them. There's a lot of tips and tricks, and there's books you know, on, on search engine optimization. How do you actually achieve it? A few things that you can't trick to get search engine optimization are timely content, Google really rewards results that recently happened versus that content from five years ago. Google rewards social content where they can see that multiple people are involved in a conversation or thread, that it's getting updated with new posts, and they reward things that are mobile friendly. And the entire platform 
is, is on the bootstrap template, so it's mobile friendly, so it works on whatever device you're using. So I haven't heard about this organization yet, and I click on this link, and I go learn what's going on. So here's the entire thread. Obviously, you can't read it because it's zoomed out, so let's see the question. So this is our, our first person. He says, hey, I've got this decision to make between axial or radial airflow, right? I don't know anything about this, but this is a fairly detailed question. He's looking for a business solution to help him solve his problem so his company is more profitable, so he's more successful in what he's doing. And that's the whole reason people join these organizations is they want to be more successful at their job. So as we read his answer, he's got a lot of things he's looking for. And here's Larry. Larry comes in and answers this. He says, hey, here's actually a back and forth decision that I've made, and here's how it actually impacts on dollars, right? Here's the money you're going to save or spend based on that decision you've made. Now, if I can Google my answer, or my Google my question, I can find a rich portal like the Coin Laundry's Open Forum, and I can get good information I'm looking for. That's how you can get me to join. That's one of the first ways you can use a community is leveraging open content to draw in search engine optimization, to allow your content your members are creating to bring people in, to provide them a reason to join, and ultimately get them to sign up. Switching gears a little bit. So now we've got that person to sign up. Maybe we got their email address, um, and as a non-member, they just told us who they are, or maybe they've actually committed and become a member and they started to pay us. What do we do with them then? So what we recommend is automate many processes that you'd like a member to go through. And there's this fun word called journey mapping. A journey map is an ideal process from start to finish that takes your member from learning about you, signing up, committing to be a member, all the way up to serving as president of the organization. Now, not everybody makes it all the way up the journey, and everyone's journey might take a different path, right? I might go left and you might go right, that's okay, but we're trying to get the right message to the right member at the right time through very personalized calls to action. A few examples of an onboarding process might be, hey, welcome as a new member. We'd really like you to update your bio. We'd like you to post in the community. We'd like you to share a profile picture. And if that doesn't happen, we'd like you to log in. Notice some of these items are repeated on here. I'm going to give multiple shots at pulling that member in and asking them to do something very specific. Next up, we might have a volunteer campaign. Hey, thanks for becoming a member. I want you to serve on the board as president. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I just joined. Why should I be on the board? It, it doesn't make sense. I just joined. I should do a small task, right? I should help out at a local event. Maybe I should do a larger task, like help out at the annual conference, become a mentor, volunteer for a committee, right? Serve on that committee, be a committee chair, then serve on the board. If we can escalate these members up the commitment curve one step at a time, we know they're more successful and they're more likely to say yes to those asks. It could also be come to the annual conference, right? Hey, have you registered yet? Did you know people are talking? Did you know there's an early bird discount? We want you to come to the homepage. I want you to invite your friends to come. Go look at the program and sign up for sessions you want to attend. Go get involved in conversations before the event and then attend. And when I attend, I want to reward you with a badge. Now, these emails we're sending out aren't just your typical marketing email. They don't have the kind of box around them that you're used to seeing or the masthead that tips you off that a marketer sends it to you. No offense to marketers, we love those emails, but these have a different feel. These feel like a personalized call to action from one member um, to another, or from the community manager to another, and they have a very high conversion rate. When I talk about a conversion rate, I don't mean that somebody looked at the email or clicked the link. I mean that they actually took that action. So we did a study with one of our customers, ASAE, the um, Association for Association Executives, and they found that something very simple, like Dan just posted a message in the community but doesn't have a profile photo. If within an hour of him posting that message, I send him an email, hey, Dan, thanks for starting a discussion. That's great. Did you know that people who post messages with a profile photo are, you know, 30% more likely to get a response, love for you to add a photo, here's how you do it. A simple message like that gets a 43% conversion rate. 
where almost half the people I ask are actually taking that action that I'm asking them to take. Now, what does this look like in the software? Out of the box, I've baked in about 50 different best practice campaigns for you with the automation rule built out, the email templates and the conversion tracking all there, just turned off. All you have to do is go review the campaigns you like, tweak them and turn them on, and you'll be successful. I also give you a button that says new rule on the right there, and you can create your own campaigns to automate your own processes. So I like to say if you do something more than five times, build an automation rule that helps take care of that for you. Now this is a, an example of that introduce yourself here email. Hey Greg, what do you think about Hug so far? If you haven't introduced yourself, we actually have a thread called Introduce Yourself Here. And I'd like you to say hello and tell other people about yourself in the community. Now, I don't want you to post in the Introduce Yourself Here thread just because I want you to post in the Introduce Yourself Here thread. There's actually psychology behind this. We know that there's a little bit of fear on that first post. The people are a little bit hesitant to make their first post because there, there's a little bit of fear. Like, what happens if I post? What if no one answers? So to help you overcome that fear of, of your first post, I say, here's a safe place to post, and here's an example of how to post. Look, everyone else is doing it. You can easily jump on the bandwagon and make your first post as well. If I have a question, all I have to do is hit reply, and this email will go right back to the person who sent it to you. So Lindsay's my community manager, and if I go to reply to this, it just opens up a dialogue with Lindsay. So I can easily ask a question or get some advice or tell her I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do and she can help support me through the process. So it's not an impersonalized message, it's a very personalized message from the community manager to me, the recipient of that message. This is an example of a rule, this is a scheduled rule and this rule is gonna send the email to anybody who's written more than four posts but hasn't posted in a while and hasn't received an email in a while as well. Now unlike a typical marketing campaign, this is not designed to go to 500 people today. It might go to one or two people today, but those are the right people to get that message today. Pause for a second there and see if we have any questions in the chat log so far. Any questions from anyone on the phone? Nothing yet, we're good. Awesome. Next up we wanna talk about making it easier for your users to participate. So Dan, do you want to talk about single sign-on and unified profiles? Absolutely. So, so the single sign-on provides your users, your members, with this unified experience between the Silver Bear web portal modules and the Higher Logic platform. Um, and if you flick over to the next slide, Greg, we can leverage all of this uh, and move on to the next slide. Sorry, to the activity sync. That's right, we can leverage all of this using HighLogic's Act Activity Sync in order to aggregate all of that data uh, into the Silver Bear membership back office, the back office that's built on Dynamics 365. So we can see here, for example, that Dan has made a contribution to, in this case, a discussion around looking for tips on automating the member processes. Now, as a result, this has come back into Dan's profile record in the Silver Bear Dynamics platform. It can also drive uh, individual value scoring as well. So it's not just bringing in those contributions to discussion groups, but it can also uh, drive individual value scoring if the recipient or the participant downloads some content or even uploads some content into the community platform. Um, so if you can see the, the image underneath the, um, the activity that says that I've contributed to that particular forum, you can see over on the right hand side there's an individual value score there. That will start uh, incrementing whenever uh, Dan performs some additional tasks within that, in that community forum. If you flick over to the next slide, Greg, we'll see that as a result of that you can actually utilize, you can leverage some really powerful um, native reporting functionality from the Silver Bear Dynamics platform. So you can use something called Advanced Find to start looking for those individuals that have made very specific contributions or who have very specific uh, 
um, individual uh, value scoring all in one place and you can aggregate all of that data and pull it out into something called Power BI which again is a native piece of reporting functionality that you get as part of that Dynamics 365 suite. So all of that powerful uh, functionality that you're getting from the higher logic platform is essentially coming back into your Silver Bear uh, back office and it gives you some um, inordinate uh, and powerful uh, reporting capability. Very cool. I was looking at some Power BI results uh, yesterday. We were analyzing all of our customers in aggregate and we whitewashed the data to find global trends and best practices and kind of analyze what's going on in communities. And two interesting facts I learned. People are most likely to get involved in a conversation on Wednesday. Not sure why Wednesday, but it seems to be the most popular day to have a conversation. People are most likely to share a file on a Tuesday. So when we looked at the trends, we saw that, you know, the weekends are kind of quiet. During the middle of the week, it bumps up and then goes down. But Wednesday is the most popular day to have a discussion. And Tuesday is the most popular day to share a file. Now, what might I do with that information? If I want to ensure that a conversation gets out there, gets responses and resonates with other people, I might post it on Wednesday where I know people are already uh, reading those discussions. So we've got our first question in the community, and this is a good one. So for some professional communities, there's a reluctance to chat or even ask questions that may reveal confidential information. What tools exist to manage a community that might have issues like that? So that's a great question. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in my next section, but let's start off by providing some, some actual answers for you. One is, we want to make it easier for people to have conversations so they're more likely to do it. The second part of that is we want to have our community champions posting what are called seed questions to show other members of the community what types of conversations they should be having. So I don't want you to reveal confidential information. I want you to talk in general about best practices. I want you to help answer each other's questions. I want you to share things that are okay to share but in order to show you how to do that, I want to have some example questions. I want to have some example answers up there. You can also run campaigns that don't have anything to do with private or confidential information. So after the webinar today, why don't we have a conversation in the community about all the things we just talked about? What's the one thing you learned on the webinar that you're going to implement next week? What questions do you have of the speaker that maybe they weren't able to get to on the live webinar? It's a common thing we all shared in that experience, and there's no reason we can't talk about that without revealing confidential information. There also is the potential that somebody says something that's inappropriate. Right? If you're going to provide a platform, people might say something. That's okay. There are moderation tools built in that help remove posts that shouldn't be there. So if someone says something inappropriate or violates a, a trade rule or, or antitrust, that's okay. There's a moderation tool built right in, and that post can be removed very quickly. There's a code of conduct that's set up in the community that reminds people, hey, these are the type of things we can talk about, and these are the type of things we can't talk about. So providing a platform for people is step one. Providing them guidance on what type of things they should talk about is step two. Having the community manager drive a content calendar of items where in there talking about common experiences, we're talking about events we attend. We're talking about that webinar that just came out and do we agree with the findings or not and how do those findings impact our business. Having conversations around common strategies and interests like that allow us to be, um, you know, communicate with each other without violating confidential information. Um, and we run a lot of communities for what we call trade associations where the members are companies that might compete with each other. And that's okay. They still have a lot to talk about. The other side of that is a lot of these organizations have committees where we might be competitors against each other, but in a committee setting, we're all working to achieve a similar goal or objective, right? We're all going to create a new policy or a new standard. And together, working with each other, we'll have, you know, balloting and voting and we'll have documents, we'll work on, we'll revise the document. And over a series of months, through collaboration with each other, we'll come up with a new industry policy. And that's a great way to get your members to engage with each other. They're probably already doing it now without a formalized tool inside the community platform, but we're not violating any rules. So I hope that was a, a good answer to your question. 
All right. Going back in time, I changed the slides up on Dan. Sorry about that. So we talked about single sign-on. So if I have a profile inside the Silver Bear CRM portal, I also have a profile inside the Higher Logic portal. It's the same login. It's not a separate thing that I have to go connect and do. This is an example of a question I posted in the Silver Bear community. So I'm looking for tips on automating the member process. Does anybody have any information that could help me? I'm hoping to learn from others how they do this, right? What are the best practices out there? Now, I can go to the community and read this conversation, but I don't want a chance that every member is going to go to the community to read that exact conversation. So what I do is I send either a real time or I'll show you a daily digest to other members in that community that have expressed interest in membership strategy in the past. So this is the email I got in my inbox in Outlook. It can be in Outlook or in Gmail or in whatever client you're using. But I got that email and here it says the exact question. I can see Greg posted it, there is his picture. And if I have an answer, I can answer this just by clicking on the reply button. I literally click on the reply button in my email I type in my answer, I put in my picture, and when I hit send, all of that goes over to the community. So imagine the process we've laid out so far. Open content helps drive members in to want to learn more about your organization and ultimately join. Automating the member process ensures that members learn about the community, why they should be a part of it, and asks them to participate. Frictionless content makes it easy for people to participate in the community. It's easy to ask a question. It's easy to reply to a question. So we have lots of conversations. Guess what lots of conversations lead to? That ties right back into our open communities and our search engine optimization. If I'm asking people and making it easy for them to have conversations, they will. And that just ties right back into our first point of open content drives new members. Now, a real-time digest is probably too much for most people. What most people want is what we call a daily digest. You may be familiar with MemberWise. It's a community we're powering in the UK right now. Feel free to go join. It's an open community. You can go sign up right now and join. And here's a post from June 5th. You can tell when I was preparing for the webinar. And this is a daily digest I got from other people asking questions in that community. I can see John Clay ask a very specific question. He's providing information around this. He's answering someone's question. All of that comes right to me in my inbox. So it's very easy for me to actually get conversations, for me to participate in conversations through either real time or daily digest. Now let's tie that back to what Dan was talking about. If people are engaging in the communities, I wanna measure that engagement. I wanna track it with points. And here's my profile. You can see that I'm a speaker, I'm a resource guru, I go to our annual conference. I've been engaging in the community in discussions and library entries. People have been recommending things I've done. I volunteer for things. And all of that activity generates points, generates rewards, and is tracked inside of our software. Now it's good that we track it, but that's not great. The great part is that I push it back into Silver Bear system. So now you have that critical business intelligence in your system of record, and you can do stuff with it, right? We can take that information and we can run reports or dashboards or campaigns around exactly what's happening inside the community that the members are doing. Dan, is there anything that you'd like to add to what I covered today? Oh, absolutely. I, I think in terms of the in terms of the Silver Bear platform, we've got acquisition and retention absolutely nailed. I think what's the uh, what the single sign-on and the integration into the higher logic platform gives us is is engagement. It really helps us close that loop. And what you've just uh, demonstrated over the last few slides is 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 absolutely fundamental to to uh, to our integration piece. It's being able to just pull all of that information into a single source into a master back office system that's built on on a Dynamics 365 platform and doing some really, really powerful stuff with that. Aggregating all of that data, being able to um, uh, provide some really good segmentation lists, um, pushing stuff out um, to, to essentially get people to stay within your community and, and encourage them to, 
to um, to keep uh, to keep subscribing. That that's perfect, and I'll echo that from from our side. Is Higher Logic is an engagement platform. We're not a database. We rely on Silver Bear to be your database of record. So if a member comes to the community through the open content and ultimately wants to join, that join process is happening in Silver Bear's application. If they need to pay to be a member, that's happening through the Silver Bear financial module. If you want to run detailed membership reports or track members or renew members, all of that's happening in Silver Bear. Right? So that's the back end system that you have access to to manage it. And Higher Logic becomes the front end system that members go to to engage with you and with each other. And together, both systems complement each other, meaning data comes from Silver Bear into Higher Logic, activities happen in Higher Logic, and I write that information back into Silver Bear for you to analyze yeah. it, for you to make better business decisions around what's happening with your members. So they're very complementary systems that work together to help achieve your goals. So do we have any questions out there from the people listening? I don't see anyone typing, so we'll assume no more questions. I want to thank everyone for joining us on the call today. Hopefully we were able to provide you some great information on how online communities can help you attract members, onboard those members successfully, provide them engaging tools that keep them, retain them as members, um, and that entire loop fits in with your CRM, giving you better business intelligence on your members. Again, I want to thank everybody for joining us on this webinar, and I want to thank our partner Silver Bear and Dan for participating as well. And thank you. Thank you, Greg, and thank you, Logic. All right, everyone have a great day.